us during the next International Healthcare Summit. Please, Mikhailo, giving you the flow. The next uh, speaker is going to be Mark Arnold, that's a general of the U.S. Army. That's a person who is a legend. He's a brigadier general who is retired, who has a huge experience in serving the U.S. Army. He was uh, a Green Beret of the U.S. Army. General Mark Arnold uh, for two years was serving in Iraq and Afghanistan. He was in uh, operative uh, teams where he was performing and commanding uh, the brigade of the seven co countries' representatives and serving. So he, he was uh, head of the 100th uh, division of the U.S. Army. He had four brigades. One of the brigades was a medical brigade, which was uh, preparing and training the combat medics according to the 68 Vixky course. Probably from that moment of time, that was the moment when General started to love the military medicine and combat medicine. After retiring, General finalized uh, his course as the emergency technician, and he had a five-year experience to work on the pre-hospital medical care, emergency care. Right now, he is uh, the executive member of four NGOs and also the University of Ohio, where he got his uh, degree in systemic engineering. As a medical technician, he has finalized the combat medic course in 2018 and in 2022. After visiting Ukraine in 2020, he returned to the U.S. and he became a certified ATC CMC combat medic course trainee. After visiting Ukraine this year, Mark, as an extraordinary person, director with a systemic approach, proposed to improve the training of combat medics in Ukraine. About this project, the next talk is going to be delivered. Please applause to Mark Arnold. That was not me. Tiaki, <laughs> you, Mike, I appreciate that. So um, I am, I get a lot of questions from Ukrainians of why an American with no Ukrainian blood, no Ukrainian relations, never been to Ukraine until after the major invasion. Why do I dedicate so much of my time, energy, and experience, both in medical and at the executive level, to Ukraine? Um, is there, who slides? Who advances the slides? So, as Professor Bajuk mentioned, I spent two long visits in Ukraine last year. And if this alone would motivate me, that motivates me right there. Like many Americans, I came to Ukraine that, because I was revolted by Russia's unprovoked aggression, revolted by the news of Russian atrocities. And then I walked among one of those atrocities just five days after Izum's liberation. But I'm just one of millions of Americans, millions of Americans who support Ukraine. I want you to know that American politicians will behave like American politicians do. But please know that the majority of Americans support their government to support Ukraine to do what you medical professionals know is most important, and that's to stop the bleeding. And the way the bleeding is stopped is America's support and Western support for a quick Ukrainian military victory. So after my two visits to Ukraine, I saw, while I was there, I saw medic training going on. I saw medics that had entered the military 
and had mm, some minimal training working beside the medics who had been thoroughly trained before the full-scale invasion. I came back, I made a connection with Dr. Hora Beve. She led me to Professor Badiouk, and then we began this collaboration of how do we build the capacity to train all of Ukrainians medics thoroughly. At this moment, Professor Badiouk in the academy has placed itself in a position where it is getting six dispersed facilities up and running to teach the course. And the course is called the TCCC Combat Medic Care Course. Very rigorous, as Professor Badiouk pointed out. I went through the course twice as an EMT. Why? because of school shootings in the United States. As an emergence, as a, as a medic in the United States, I need to be able to respond to mass shootings. When I came back from Ukraine, I became an instructor in combat medic corpsman. Why? I just wanted to understand the details of what an instructor needs to know. This is a very rigorous course, 94 skills taught. It's used by the U.S. military, and as medics, whether you're in the Navy, the Air Force, the Army, the Marines, you go through this course every two years to remain qualified as a medic, and it's sustainable here in Ukraine. Why? Because it's Ukrainian talent teaching the course. I see American volunteers coming over, well-meaning, but very ad hoc, very little rigor, helping this much, getting the, the agency involved and supporting the agency, we will be able to uh, support uh, Professor Badiouk's objective of training all 27,000 Ukrainian medics in an extremely rigorous course. And when that's done, you go back and train them all over again the next year, just like we would in the military. This program is got a $2 million budget. And you know who funds that? It's not the US government. It's Americans who believe in Ukraine. I am the one man fundraiser for this. And $2 million is being raised by me going to individual Americans, speaking very publicly and getting $100 here, $1,000 there. And the slides that I'm about to show you are for the more sophisticated donors who donate $10,000. They want to know the details. But it's all done by Americans who believe in Ukraine. And I'm proud to say... I am proud to say that at the end of this month, we will have all, we have all the $500,000 raised that I've been able to do to have all the equipment for all 32 classroom sets purchased this year, shipping to Ukraine by the end of this year. This is not the entire equipment, but this gives you an idea. Multiple different types of sophisticated mannequins. This is a 63-hour course, but for Ukrainian medics who have never been through much of this training, I recommend to the academy make it a two-week course. A two-week course with six-day weeks. The medics will receive care or training on care under fire, meaning how you treat a casualty when you're being shot at. Medics will learn how to triage. Medics will learn all of the skills for evacuation, the communication skills, the logistics skills, and, Colonel, these medics will learn all of the skills that an ambulance medic needs to know during evacuation. They'll learn all the skills related to massive hemorrhaging, including, in the lower right, junctional wounds. 
airway management, including ventilation, cricothyroidotomy, a very advanced skill, needle decompression, or tension pneumothorax. They'll learn how to take all the vital signs and more importantly, how to assess those vital signs and what do they mean. They'll learn treatment for shock, meaning how to provide IVs, including intraosseous access, fluid warming, whole blood and plasma administration, administration of analgesics, administration of antibiotics, administration of TXA to stop internal bleeding. These medics will learn how to treat fractures, not just for splinting, but also how to pull traction. All sorts of wound care, including stump wound dressing, burn dressings, and fluid resuscitation. And yes, the extremely important skill of converting tourniquets to pressure dressings in order to avoid preventable amputations of Ukrainian soldiers. These skills are taught, they're learned, and they're evaluated in a classroom. And in some cases, that classroom may be a tent. But just as importantly, these skills will be re-evaluated in a simulated tactical field environment so that all of these skills will need to be demonstrated by each medic to be able to do it by headlamp in the dark. All 94 skills. The way this works is me, Mark Arnold, working with generous Americans who believe in Ukraine, getting donations. Those donations go to a foundation called the Columbus Foundation that has $3 billion in assets, a very well-respected foundation. The Columbus Foundation works with our other partner, Cleveland Maidan Association. Cleveland Maidan, is, its directors are Ukrainian-American physicians who have been supporting Ukraine for years. Professor Badyuk and his staff tell us exactly what they need, and they go by the TCCC uh, specifications. It tells you right there exactly what mannequins you need and all the other equipment. That goes to me because I'm, a, I'm an instructor, so I double-check it all. And then I work with one of the hosts here, Jans Corporation, Rick Finsterbush, has volunteered his company to use their uh, administration and very importantly, their reputation in the United States to get the lowest pricing for all this equipment. And I might add, all these volunteers, including me, we don't get paid. Nobody's paying me to be here. Nobody's paying me to travel to Ukraine. Nobody's paying me for my hotel room and travel. And the same with the Cleveland Maidan Association. The same with Jans Corporation, who's volunteering not just their time, but as they get the equipment ordered, that equipment's going to an area in Jans's warehouse that they have volunteered at no charge for us to assemble all this equipment into 32 classroom sets. The Cleveland Maidan Association will use its supply chain that it has been using since 2015 to get the equipment safely to a warehouse in Ukraine that Maidan has been using effectively for years. When that equipment arrives, I will be waiting for it personally. And I will work with Professor Badyuk and his staff and other good people of Ukraine to make sure that it gets to the locations that it absolutely needs to be at, teaching combat medics and locations that Professor Badyuk has designated. 
Because this program has mobility, up to 10 mobile teams, the same donations go the same route with Professor Baduk telling us what vehicles he needs. Cleveland Maidan will purchase those vehicles in the United States, pick up trucks, and use its supply chain to get it to Ukraine, again, to a safe warehouse where Mark Arnold, me, will be waiting for it and helping make sure it gets to retitled to the Academy's ownership for use by its uh, mobile instruction teams. Professor Baduk and his staff are the ones responsible for qualifying instructors. It's a very rigorous program. I went through it myself this year. And as he continues, he will continue recruiting a lot of Ukrainian physicians as well as medics to be these instructors. 22 teaching facilities, up to 10 mobile teams. Colonel, this is how your 27,000 medics are trained. A program of this scale trains 27,000 medics in 94 sophisticated skills in 12 months. This is a big program, and this will make a huge difference in Ukraine. Some of these training centers may have confidential locations, but there's one location that we all know will happen. We look forward to the day when Professor Baduk and his team are teaching here. It's just a matter of time, sooner than later, I believe. So, I will be in Ukraine for a while. I've got lots of work to do here. But when I return to the United States, I will continue the Mark Arnold Show of fundraising to get to another $1 million to make this program happen. Please wish me luck in my fundraising, and I'm sure we will be successful saving tens of thousands of lives and tens of thousands of arms and legs. Thank you. Дякуємо, дякуємо, друзі. І мені здається, можна гучніше поплескати, так, пану генералу, ось так, трішки. Ніхто не втомився, велике спасибі. Друзі, що, можливо, хвилинку на запитання? So maybe a, a couple of minutes for questions. If there are questions, we will do it really quickly. So this is about the question, quick question. If we have a minute or two, or maybe if uh, you understood everything, so we will move on. What would you say, dear audience? So thank you and glory to our general. Let's uh, give a round of applause to our general. Thank you.